Hi all, welcome back. Another good week this week. So we're working on trim again. So Simon's been working the rear seat around the wheel tubs. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the, the hood lining. And then we pulled that sump back out to do the mods on that and get it welded up. And I'm going to show you how we're going to go about polishing it. So hope you enjoy it and stay tuned at the end because I've got some interesting stuff in Astral Design Extra. Good morning. So a few things to talk to you about today. Um, took the sump off the boss out to see Matt at JNT, so he's going to weld it up for me, which I spoke to him about uh, months ago. So I showed you before what we've done with that, so I won't get into that now, but we, we basically cut the bottom off the sump for some ground clearance, so we needed to up the, in, the capacity of the sump um, so that it wasn't going to lack from oil. So I'm going to make a couple little tweaks on it, and then another thing that he suggested was that we actually polish all the parts before it gets welded and that'll make our polishing process easier after and I thought that was a really good suggestion. And the other thing that he also said that he'll be doing is making a plate up to actually bolt this down solid before he welds it so we don't lose any of the shape and make sure that it seals properly. So I'll go through and show you a few bits now about um, how I plan on polishing this aluminium up and um, look at what else we can do around the workshop this morning. So what we have here is um, Really nice Steph sump. So, you know, it's got a billet base on it and some nice windage trays and stuff. And designed as a dual, and I, I sort of wondered why it would have this big front on it, but basically the oil pump fits in that area and then the pickup goes down and around and up. And our problem is in the XC is we needed just an extra five or 10 mil clearance here for the, the rack. And then we took about 35 mil off the bottom of the sump because we virtually had um, not enough ground clearance especially for Reggio. So to make up for that, we've added the wings on the side um, and made all the aluminium bits up. So what I'm gonna do now is pull that apart and just make some, um, just do some sanding and polish it up. And then one of the things he'd like me to correct, I'm just gonna put a little kick on this back edge here so that we can make this gap here just a bit smaller for him, make it easier to weld. And um, we'll do that. So I'll just show you the process we're gonna work through. Okay, so I've just given that a little tweak there, so that's brought that up. It'll make that a bit easier for in the world. So I just did that. Now a little, um, a little folder and a combination of that and a rubber mallet on the bench. So now I'm going to take that big piece and just show you how I'm going to finish that off to get it to polish. So with the polishing, it's the same process we use for everything. We need to sand it so that we can get rid of the marks and scratches. So where this has been bent here you can see it sort of stretched the aluminium there so I'm going to try and sand that out and then there's a lot of little you know superficial scratches obviously where it's been in pressed and pushed around so I'll give that a sand so I'm going to try and do majority of that with a six inch so I'll grab my sanding machine and um, see how we go okay so I'm going to use the six inch so I'll start off with some 320 so I've got some um, murka there and by utilising that, I can use the vacuum setup, so that just reduces the amount of dust again, even on the alloy. So I'll jump in with that and see how that goes. So I'm going to keep that as flat as I can so that I get it nice and smooth. Um, and then there, there's a little bit of something on there, a bit of steel by the feel of it. So I'm just going to get a blade and get rid of that. So you just got to keep an eye on what's happening as you go. And then, it's just like sanding undercoat or anything else really, it's a matter of getting it flat. Reducing the scratches and the marks. So whatever that is there. There's something. A bit of weld splatter or something there, I think. So whatever that is, it's going to create me some drama. As you can see the, the shiny spot there. So there's definitely something in there. A bit, of, a bit of metal or something harder than the aluminium that's just making it difficult. So I've got to get rid of that. So on this edge here, 
where it's been folded, there's quite a, a deep groove in there. And you can see, that, oh, there it is. So I'm going to actually use this little fella. So it's, it's a sander, obviously spins rather than oscillates. And I've just put some white any in that so that I can try and rip that off. So the trick is you've got to stay nice and flat. I'll try and do this one handed. Oh, here we go. I can sit that there. And you need to be able to control that and keep it nice and flat. So I'm doing that just so I can get rid of that groove and try and keep it flat still because I don't want to have to put dips and dies in it. This aluminium is quite thick so I can afford to take a bit off it. Okay, so I've ripped into that with the 180, got rid of that line out of it. Now we'll go back to the 320 on the 6 inch and get rid of the 180 marks. All right, so that's looking pretty sweet now. So that's 320, so now I'm going to jump to probably 800. Give it a good solid go with the 800, and then we'll go to something a bit smoother and then hit it on the machine to see how we're looking. A little bit hard to see, but there's a few marks in here that I can see in that 800, and if I don't take them out now, when I go to polish, you know, sometimes you think, oh, the polisher will get them out. Well, if, if they're not out with the sandpaper, they're not going to come out with the polisher. And if you do get them out with the polisher, you're going to put a little, you know, a little dip in it. So this, at this point now, it needs to be super smooth and clean. And any marks that are still on there now are going to show. So I might leave a couple in there just to show you um, how that happens. Right, so I'm going to jump to 1200 now. And then we'll go to some 2000 Abrolon, this one. So these are what I normally use for polishing my clear, but um, I've seen plenty of people using them on this. I haven't done this for ages. Last time I did a manifold, I think might even been on a Mustang polishing alloy. So I'll just give this a quick buzz and we'll go and see what it looks like on the polishing wheel. So you can see now that's starting to actually get a reflection on it. So that's um, 2000. But as I said, there's a couple little marks in there that are now starting to show their head. So once I polish, Oh, they're just here, but a bit hard to see with the, the camera. So I'll take it out the back, put it on the wheel, and let's see what we got. So that's the heavy mop wheel, so that's starting to pick up a shine now. You can see the the lines from the polisher, but they're straight versus the orbital. So, just keep going a bit with that. So like I keep saying, the process with polishing is it's a slow reduction of scratches. So, you know, 180, 400, 1200, 1500, 2000, and now we're down to the polishing. It's still coarse, fine, finer, finished. Now one of the issues with aluminium, if you push too hard on it, if you've got a little problem area, you're going to put a groove in it, and actually that'll stay there forever. So if you haven't done your prep work properly and you're sanding, and I've got a little squirrely going on there, so I'm just going to work those out. So I'm on the soft wheel now, so just running the opposite direction of the, um, the coarse wheel. The reason I'm going to run the opposite direction is so I can see whether I'm taking the course marks out. So we're really starting to see a shine there now. Okay, so you can see our shine there. So it's still got some marks in it from the, that wheel. So I'm going to go now over to the polisher with some lens wool. And then I may even experiment with um, the polishing when we use on the, on the paint. But I'll just try this with the, um, the Lamsey first with our mother's aluminium polish. Nice 
Right oh, so the battery went flat, so I had to go and do that. So I'm back now, and so we're on the mothers with the lamb's wool. So pretty much what I use on paint, but I'm using on metal. And then the merker, so this is the one direction rather than oscillating. A little bit of polish. Can't believe how much torque this little machine's got. They're um, quite expensive in the scheme of things, but um, an unbelievable tool. I mean, this brushless technology that they're working with now is amazing. So, that's looking pretty good. So we go from all the scratches and marks, then we sand it. I'll just do a quick recap on that. So we started off with, um, well, I'll just do a quick recap on that then. So we started off with the, the one way, you know, basically spinning machine with some 180 um, and then went up to the six inch on the Merkin machine with some 320. So we went 320 and then from 320 to 800, and then from 800 we went to 1200, and then 1200 still on the machine is the 2000 in the Abranet. So once we did that, we went out on the rag mop, did the course, is what we've got here, and then so that's the um, the rope mop, and then a softer mop, uh, a calico mop, and now with the old mothers and we've got a shine and you can pretty much keep going. So as I mentioned to you, any little marks that you leave behind in the sanding process, they're going to still show up. So there's like a couple of pits here and one there. So it's really up to you to decide um, at that sanding stage how good you want it and what you should take out of it. So I just went off camera and thought I'd try the the foam pad, like cutting pad that I normally use for you know doing clear, and it's awesome. So with the mother's polish, um, it's like a good step between on the machine out the back and the lamb's wool. Um, the lamb's wool seems to come up shinier, but this yellow pad that you can hear by the amount that the machine's working, it's really biting in and giving it just a nice fine cut. So, like I always say, you just got to keep experimenting. So now I'll hit that again with the lambs in, that should come up awesome. There we go. Just want to give a shout out to Mark from Three Footed Monster and thank him for his support. This little gadget he's got has been able to help me to film a lot of what I do on my own and now it's just been a winner with the Good Design Awards for Australian Made. So well done Mark, great little gadget and if you're doing any filming um, it's definitely one that's a bonus to have. So Simon's here today just playing seat so what are you up to mate? Alright, so I thought I'd just get the old cover off and the old foam just so I can get this base frame. So this is the XC, yeah. what I class as the backrest, you'd probably call it something else. Ah, uh, it's rear squab. Yep. Um, so I thought if we can utilise this frame, then we can pick up some sort of points to mount it. And I think those hooks have been cut out, we can put them back in to locate that. Um, that way if that can sit in. Get that into here and pick up off these points here to, to locate it. And then the base I've already started cutting into, so I just cut the old insert out. So that's the FG though, because I've put yeah. the FG floor in there. So that's the X, sorry, the FG lower. And you've obviously cut a bit of foam out of that now. Yeah, so it's the same with the front seats, they had the big bulge for the, the design of the uh, insert. So yep. Just cut that out and made this up to flow with the, what the front seat has. Uh, so we can just sort of sit that in there now and then we'll get that squab in and 
see how it goes. Might yep. work, might not. So we're going to try and trim it a bit more off the front of that as well, aren't we, to get the, a bit, yeah. as much room as we can. Obviously, we've, yeah. we've had two adults in there and they fit. It's just a matter of now working what looks right and um, give us as much room as we can get. Yeah. All right, well, we'll come back and have a look when you start progressing a bit more. All right, so we've got the squab frame sitting in there now. We end up moving this bar because that was over here. So we've now moved that in to clear the tubs. And then just bent these four bars up here. We've got one there, one there, and then the other two on the other side. So we've got all those to go around the tub. So now I've got something for the foam to work towards. And then I'll put a board on the face of that as well. And then I can build all my foam out from there. And also just brought this down a little bit more as well, uh, just to get the proportions right, because this was sitting up a bit high. So that's sitting there pretty good now. And I can start shaping up the foam for the here in the, in the squad. Very good, so that'll still enable us to use the factory FG seat belts and yep. their mounts off the bottom. Yep. And then that bottom swab, that slides up behind the, the rear, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So these here will actually go behind that. Still got a bar underneath here, which we've got to get rid of on this. And then that will just work the same way as it does in an FG. That'll slide up behind the squab this will be bolted in at the bottom, and then that will clip in in the original frame down the bottom there. Cool. So and now we'll be able to start putting a bit of shape in and um, getting our seating position right. Yep, that's it. And then I've got that insert here, which is pretty good. It's just a temporary one at the moment, but that shape is the um, same shape as the, the fronts, so that'll tie in nicely. And I can do the similar shape for the back as what it's on the front there now. So decision time again. With a build of this sort of complexity, there just seems to be decision, decision, decision. So back to the trim again, we're looking at now what we're gonna do with the hood lining. So we've, we've sort of worked out inside door trims, making lots of progress there and the seats, as you'll see other, in other parts of the video. So I'm now looking at the hood lining, what we're gonna do there. So what's sitting on the top here is out of the FG. So now they're a one piece. Um, moulded thing that fits in. Um, the thought was we might get away with using that, but because of the size of it in relation to, you can see the windscreen difference with the late model cars, the windscreens lay down flatter. And then primarily they're held in by the handles and the lights. So we're looking that that's probably just way too hard to go down that track. The other option is to consider doing a one piece, or what they class as a one piece wood lining in a show car style, which has got you know, an edge all the way around, then a big piece in the middle maybe, you know, with another flat section through the middle. Um, I don't think that suits the style of the build that we're working with here. I've been talking all the way through about having a, a, a factory style about it. So after a fair bit of debate and discussion with both Simon the trimmer and Peter the owner, um, we've agreed that the way to go is to go with the original steel bows like an XC. So they had you know, the five or six steel bows with a stitched hood lining in it. So the decision now is that we will run the, the black suede Altera fabric that we're gonna run elsewhere in the trim and we'll do the hood lining with that. And part of that decision making process has sort of come about because we're using this panel on the B pillar, uh, the factory XC, the one that goes on the A pillar from the XC as well. We're gonna use those with some modifications across the windscreen. This one goes across, we'll be able to utilise that as well. And realistically, from the door belts up, the car really is XC on the inside. So it almost became logical then that we would use the steel bows. So that's the one that come out of the original car, which had been re-trimmed at some stage. And then the next thing to look at is the actual um, sun visors. So these ones here, have been re-trimmed once again, but they're the original XC. And then this one's out of the FG, so a little bit smaller, they don't go back under the mirror. And it's always interesting how, you know, things with Ford don't change that much there. And they're very similar in shape and style. But I'm sort of feeling at the moment that it'll probably go with the XC one. And then the internal mirror, this is the FG one. And I'm sort of blown away how similar that is in shape and size to an XC mirror obviously got the day night stuff and that on it 
So being fairly new, I'm sure that's the one that'll end up in the car. And then the final part of the hood lining and the interior is the interior light. So pretty much made up my mind that in the, the back C pillar, um, we'll run some XC, I think they were XCDE, had the same rear pillar one, the chrome one, the nice one that goes in there, we'll utilise some of those and you can buy those new. Um, and then up the front, this is the FG um, light fitting, pretty basic. Um, if I use that, I could probably use that and paint it, but I think I'll be looking for something different. So I'm going to reach out to you guys again if anyone's got any thoughts about something that's got a nice bit of style about it that's going to suit the build. Um, I've had one suggestion already that a, um, a BMW X3 has got a fairly nice front light. Um, so interior light, be good if it had a sunglass holder in it as well, would probably be pretty cool. So I'm going to keep my eye out, um, get some feedback from you guys as well. And that'll then put that decision to bed. Simon can go ahead and, and start working his magic to make all that fit and um, finish off the deal. So I thought I'd take the time to show you a bit more about the lawn because I've got this um, extra segment now so I can do that. So the front part of the lawn here gets shaded all morning pretty much, especially in the winter. So it tends to be, turns to all winter grass through the well, they call it winter grass, I don't know exactly what it is, I'm not that clued up on it. But this front section's always struggles through the winter. And then this last year or so, I've ended up with this really fine clover with a little yellow flower on it, which I haven't had before. So I'm about to spray that. So I tried the old weed and feed. Didn't do much at all. So that's one issue. And then I've, I've had a, a few of the, I've got some sort of grub, obviously. You get a little mound of dirt coming up. We've pushed down there. But other than that, it's not too bad for this time of year. So we'll see if we can get rid of that clover. It's a big bad patch of it over here. That one there. So you can see all the kike inside it, so it won't take long once I get rid of that with a bit of spray. So one of my mates around the back at the estate here, he's um, a groundkeeper and he's given me some poison so I'll put that up what I'm going to use and see how it goes so where it's sitting there now I'm about to mow that so a lot of people think it doesn't even want mowing but I like to keep it down nice and tight I run the old Rover 45 at about 10 mil and um, it means you've got to mow fairly often so I actually enjoy the mowing process I don't see it as a chore so I'm going to zip over that now and get a few lines in it and um, I'll show you that process as we're doing it. So as you can see, it doesn't look like it really wants a mow, but once you run the mower over, you can see just how much better it looks. I think I did it Saturday morning, so you know, two days. And then here, you can see that's how much grass has come off of what I've mown there so far. So, I mean, if you let it go too long, it gets too high. And then when you cut it down, you lose that nice, crisp, clean look. So I'll jump back in and, and get it finished up. Seems a shame when you cut them and you lose all that nice grass, so catcher and a half of grass in the bin. And really happy the way that's come up. So this early in the year, we'll get rid of a few of those weeds and things out of it. I mean, I'm not an expert. I've just been doing it a long time and sort of know what works. So I, I give it um, a full 30 kilo on this front lawn, of the old Shirley's number 17. Um, just before the rain, I think we had 25, 30 mils. So that's always got to make it go and um, so I'm not sure whether this poison will knock a bit off it but it's got to be done, get rid of that clover and um, make it even better. Perfect. So I thought seeing I had my century golf gear on, I better come out and chip a few balls. So we'll just hit a few from Dave's here first. Get our eye in. Oh, that's not bad. It's all about the short game. 
So I had a question the other day about shirts. Yes, these are available. So these are for the show. So they've got the, um, the top 60 on the back. So if you want to grab these, they're in the comments. Just go to the description. There's a link there. You can go straight through. Use your card. Really good shirts. Nice cotton, nice and soft. They'll be great for the summer. Where's the go button?